so much for coming. We are so excited to have you here. Digital marketing, social media, there is so much to cover. So we are going to be pretty concise in what we talk about. Yes. So you do have papers to write down questions. Um, the team here in the purple shirts, we're going to collect your questions and we'll do a Q&A at the end. If your questions don't get answered, please feel free to send a message on Facebook to Emily Thrives and she'll send those to our team and we'll make sure that those get answered on the consultant page, all right? Okay, so I'm going to get started, but I do want you to know there is a lot to social media. Um, but one of my favorite things about social media is that it gives you the opportunity to connect with people that you would never have a chance to. I've connected with people from across the states, across the world that I would have never met before and it gives you that opportunity to share product that we all know that they will love and need. All right? It gives you a bigger chance to go outside of just tastings. So Facebook. I know there is a lot to Facebook and there are Facebook algorithms that are constantly changing and it is difficult to stay on top of things. So I highly encourage you to find a podcast find um, emails to get subscribed to. There are so many places out there to get information. Every time I'm in my car, I am listening to social media podcasts to stay up to date with the things that are changing. And this is huge with Facebook algorithms. You need to understand what's happening so you know what you need to put out there. Um, so with Facebook, there are two different ways that you can have your content seen. The first is through posts or status updates. And the next is through Facebook Lives. So with status updates, you can share text, images, videos, a variety of content. I recommend that you see what works for your audience. Every single one of you in this room has a different audience because you're different people, you have different friends on Facebook, and you are sharing Thrive in a different way because you're individuals. So find what works for your audience. Um, your friends can choose to have you as their see first. When they go to your profile picture, on your page, they have an option where they can say, I want to see Shelly's stuff first. So anytime they go to their news feed, I'm, my content is going to be pulled to the top. So I recommend that you tell that to your customers. A lot of people don't know about that feature. Tell people. Say, if you want to see updates, make sure I'm on your see first list. All right? The next is for, the next word to be seen is how well your content is doing. Um, the, as soon as you push content out, Facebook is analyzing it. They're saying, okay, are people reacting? Are they engaging with this? Are they commenting? And it's not just one word comments. It's not just commenting an emoji. Um, Facebook is really focusing on meaningful conversations. So you want to make sure that, ask questions. When you post a picture, say your little blurb about it and then ask a question. People love to talk about themselves, to share their opinions. So encourage that because that will help Facebook see that Oh, Shelly's post is doing really well. I'm going to share it to as many people as possible. So, meaningful conversations. Again, I want you to think about these three questions every single time you post. Whether it's about Thrive, your family, hobbies, whatever it is, say, why would someone want to see this? Why, is it, why am I putting it out there? Does it have anything to do with me, who I am as a person? What is it going to do for people? How will this create meaningful conversations? So ask yourself, is anyone going to say anything to this? Or are they just going to like it or give it a heart and go along? You want to make sure that they're commenting. And then one of our Thrive principles that guide us as a company is, if it's not impactful, why do it? So make sure that there is purpose and reason behind every post. <clears throat> I think it is huge for you to make yourself well-rounded. I'm not just Shelly, a Thrive Life employee. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I love being outdoors, I like reading, I like knitting. There are different things that make me who I am. So I share a variety of content. You want to make sure that people see who you are. You want to give them a reason to purchase from Shelly instead of anyone else in this room. And there's so many more of us that aren't even here at conventions. So you have to set yourself apart. The next is live videos. So Facebook created this incredible tool that is there to help you be seen. Um, Facebook will share your video with as many people as possible because you're using the tool that they provided. And as Thrive Live consultants, live videos give you a very interesting opportunity to share this product that is so foreign to a lot of people. So you are taking your lunch break at work, you open up a to-go, go live. 
go live, open up your video, say, hey, I'm taking my lunch break, I don't have a lot of time today. I didn't even have to prep this the night before. I rip this open, add water, and you go on and you talk about it. You show them how it can fit into your life so they can see how it fits into theirs. It's relatable, it's easy, and people can be sitting on their couch, they can be laying in bed, they can be running errands in their car, stopping to pick up carpool, and they're watching your video. It fits into their day so perfectly. So this is an incredible tool that you need to be using. All right, now we're moving on to Instagram, and I know that seems crazy. There is a lot to cover, so again, if you have questions, write them down. So Instagram is the fastest growing social media platform today. There was a recent change to algorithms where users are seeing 90% of the content from the people that they're following. So if I have 100 followers, 90 of those are seeing my posts. And that's incredible. That is a great opportunity for you. So you need to be utilizing that. One thing really quick I want to hit on before we talk about specifics of Instagram is consistency. With face, Instagram, we're on Instagram. With Instagram algorithms, you need to be consistent. So if you post five times a day, maintain that five times a day. If you post once a day, keep that consistency. If it's three times a week, whatever it works for you and your life, you have to be consistent and it will help you in the long run. So one of the places where your content can live is on your feed. Now this is something I want to stress that you want to use beautiful, compelling, exciting, bright imagery. Um, it's constant, it's always going to be there. Anytime anyone goes to your profile, that's what they're going to see and you want it to be compelling. So there are some things that you can do to help you with that. You don't need to be professional photographers. You don't need to hire anyone for a photo shoot, buy fancy equipment, none of that. Look up some things on, online to figure out ways to get better imagery. Move to a window. Turn on different lights. Switch a light bulb. If you're taking a selfie of yourself and the window is behind you, it's dark. No one can see you. If you turn around and there's natural light on your face, it changes your selfie and it's the same thing with your food. You want to have good imagery. So take some time to do a little bit of research to find out how you can have better imagery because that is crucial. The next one is stories and stories are again similar to Facebook Live, a great opportunity for you to show how the product works and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a quick video or photo, whatever you want it to be, where you can talk about things. And again, I want to stress that you want to be you. So I, Shelly, have a two-year-old little boy who's running around like crazy all day, so I'm going to show videos of him. He doesn't have to be eating Thrive in every single video, but he is sometimes because that's what happens in my life. You want to show who you are and what you do. Now, stories disappear after 24 hours, but if it's something that people are messaging you about or that you think is really great for your customer base, you can save it to your highlights. And I recommend categorizing your highlights. You can save them in their own folders. Um, so you can have recipes, favorites, um, on the go, family, hobbies, whatever it is, you can categorize it that way. But story highlights are a great way to save content that you've put out there. And I know a number of people and research is coming out that um, people don't scroll through their feed anymore. They make sure they watch all the stories. I personally, Every night before I go to bed, I watch every single story for the people that I'm following. I don't know why I do it, but I do it. Because it's there, and it's exciting, and it's fun to see what people are fitting into their lives. So, expanding your network. We started out by saying that social media is crucial, and it's such a great place where you can meet new people. So you're thinking, okay, Shelly, how do I, how do, I do that? The last thing I want you to do is to go and mass add hundreds of people every day. Don't do that. That's not genuine, it's not authentic, and it's not going to help you, it will hurt you. The way to network and meet new people, reach new people, is to go to your husband's Facebook page, add some of his friends, go to an interest group that you're in. I'm in a number, people call me grandma all the time. I'm a knitter, I love knitting. I'm in a number of knitting groups on Facebook and I follow a bunch of people on Instagram. So I go back and forth and communicate with them. We have messages back and forth, we talk in our groups. So once we have a relationship going, I add them as a friend. And then we build those relationships. There are a lot of ways to teach new people on social. They're all there, but you just want to make sure that you're being authentic. 
So when you add people, you want to send them a quick message. You want to say, hey, Angel, I haven't seen you since high school, but I popped up on my Facebook and I thought I'd add you. You have a beautiful family. It's great to connect with you. That is authentic. That's where I'm going. You do not want to say, Angel, I haven't seen you since high school. I am a Thrive Life consultant and I sell this incredible food. Here's my website. That's not what you want to do. It feels salesy, it pressures people, and it's not authentic. You want to really create relationships, and then Angel's going to follow me, and he's going to see how I fit Thrive Life into my everyday activities. He's going to see how it makes dinner time easier, how my kids have healthy snacks, and he's going to say, well, I want to try that. And I've already opened the door for communication, and he will come to me. All right? So now I'm going to turn the time over to Melissa. She's going to talk to us about branding. Okay, so I was one of those people who you could not pay me enough money to attend a tasting. Um, it's uncomfortable for me. I don't want to eat people's food that I don't know. And I think that, that Jason said something really powerful yesterday. He said that one out of every 10 people want to do a tasting. And so my question is, and I think that the purpose and why you all are here, is you want to know, well, how do I get to everybody else? Tastings are incredible. And I, I know of many people within this company who have been very successful. For me, and the culture that, that I'm in right now, no one wants to host a tasting. Nobody wants to clean up their house. Nobody wants to invite people over. It's awkward. Um, what they want to do is they want to sit in their bed, drinking a glass of wine or lemonade at 11 o'clock when their kids are in bed in their pajamas and they want to watch you cook. And do they want to watch you cook in a perfectly prepared kitchen where you just look glorious and your hair is all nicely done? No, because that's not duplicatable. It's not replicable. You, and you, you look like it's unattainable. So my question is, and what I think that was brought up a minute ago, I think is so important is, you have to know what you stand for. How many of you think, I'm a Thrive Life consultant first? When you think of who you are as a person, who says that's my number one character trait? Nobody. And so I think that Ty said it best earlier when he said, showing a struggle and then forming that struggle into a solution. Facebook, and that's where I'm primarily on Facebook, in my Instagram story stinks. Do not follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm not consistent. Um, but I think that Facebook is a perfect way to indirectly impact your customer base, which are whoever follows you, whoever you're friends with is a customer base. They just don't know it yet. And showing how you solve a problem. For me, I work full time. I travel about an hour and a half in the car one way to get to work. I have three kids. Um, I have a toddler. My daughter dances. I don't have time. Not only do I not have time to cook, I don't have time to clean my kitchen. It's a mess. My kids typically scream in my videos. My daughter comes and gives a little high five, and that's okay. So I encourage you, when you're thinking about branding yourself, when you're talking about who I am, the people who post Thrive Life after Thrive Life after Thrive Life post, you're not going to be received well. That's right. The people who post, my toddler, and I don't know if you guys saw the collage of kids, I had my, my two-year-old was in the middle of that, with the blue face. He took his sister, gave him a pantry can of blueberries um, on the way, I'm about 18 miles from a grocery store, and he ate the whole can. And my Facebook post said, I am not looking forward to that diaper. My kid just ate an entire can of Thrive Life blueberries. I got three customers out of that one post because people were like, you got your kid to eat. That's, that's incredible. So it doesn't even, I just hashtagged it Thrive Life. It doesn't have to be a big, huge, beautiful post about how it's impacted your life. I did one post where I literally had probably seven snacky bags uh, that weren't empty on my floorboard and I wrote Thrive Life, or let's see, Thrive Life Snackies, let's see, the floorboard of my car is where snackies go to die. 
I got two customers out of that one post because they were like, what are snackies? It just opens the door for communication. So one question I get a lot is, do I have a business page? Do I do it on my personal page? That's weird. I don't want people to think that I just do Thrive Life. Do I have a customer group? I will say it's going to determine on how your customer base is and you know the culture that you're in. <coughs> I personally do not have a business page. The con with the business page is that you are solely responsible for the content. So if you are not consistent with that, the Facebook algorithm has a tendency to not notify your customers quite as often because if you get busy for a week, you go on vacation for a week and you don't post anything, it's almost kind of like you're starting over. So for me, being busy and not really having time to manage a page on my own, I post on my personal page and I post in a customer group. So for my personal page, probably the number one question I get asked is, well, how often do you talk about Thrive on your personal page? Typically, one to five or one to six ratio is good. So if for those of you, are any of you guys friends with me on Facebook here? Okay, great. So you'll see that I, my, I think my kids are funny, right? They say stupid, funny things. So I'll post three, four, five, just totally non thrive life related things, and then I'll throw a thrive life one in there. I only do a call to action post once every maybe 20 posts. And I'll say I probably post two or three times a day on a good day, maybe once a day. So every 20 posts, if there's a sale going on, if there's you know something cool like the to-go ones, I posted about that yesterday. Um, then you can say PM me or hey, I'm going to put my website um, underneath. Facebook does not like you to go outside of Facebook. So if you say, Thrive Life is non-GMO and no preservatives, here's my link, order. Your, your customers, your friends are not going to see that post very much. If you say, my, my link is in the comments, then it, may, it has a tendency to reach more people. So if I do a call to action, I'll say PM me for details. Now that our ordering system is so much easier than it used to be, a lot of times now you'll see a link in my comment section. My customer page, my, my customer group, it's not a page, um, was created for the sole purpose of sharing tips, uh, tricks, recipes. It is not salesy. It is for my downline and any customers or potential customers to be placed in that. And the original thought behind it was, is how many of our customers order the food and then don't use it? Not because they don't want to use it, but because they don't know how to use it, because there is a little bit of a learning curve. A customer group allows a relatability there to say, oh, she shared, like I had a customer yesterday post about, she took the cranberry chicken pot pie simple plate, decided she wanted to make a pizza later, so she didn't use the crust, made a skillet pot pie, actually ate the cranberries while she was making the skillet so that did not make it in there, but then made a skillet um, dish with the contents of the pot pie. That was brilliant. So she posted it and people were like, wow, so you mean you can break up the simple plate and you don't have to cook it exactly <laughs> like it is? But that's an, a light bulb moment because a lot of customers don't realize you can even do that. Not to mention the fact that the beauty of a customer group is that, so next Saturday I'm going on a cruise, and my husband has told me I'm not allowed to turn my phone on the entire time I'm gone. But I have my teammates who are going to be doing it for me. My customers are going to be posting, my teammates can post, and you don't lose that momentum. Yes? Do you ever use like the sit share kind of programs to schedule posts? You, you definitely can. If, you, if you're starting out and it's just you and a couple of people, the, the scheduling post in a group is a perfect way to start it. The way that ours has gone is we typically have two or three posts a day anyway that have kind of grown organically. So I don't, right now, I don't have to do that. But it is definitely a good way to go. Yeah. So the customer group has been great. And if you don't have a customer group and you just have a business page, there's definitely benefits of a business page, and I, and I totally get that. But I would consider creating a customer group and inviting your downlines. Ours 
please don't be offended if I don't add you all because it I don't want it to be all consultants does that make sense so it's truly just for customers and to just kind of share stuff organically um, so that's just a little bit about um, the power of a Facebook group going going live so just a couple of you know topics about going live um, you need to have a purpose for your video whether it be how to refresh whether it be a recipe whether it be a solution to a problem, there needs to be content. A Facebook Live, five minutes. I, I would try not to go any longer than 10 minutes on a Facebook Live because the nature of the world in which we live is that they're gonna miss half of it because they're gonna get off early. So if you can create a purpose, if you can create content, so let's say I'm doing a simple plate. I will do what typical people typically do in a tasting. I will prep my noodles beforehand, I'll get everything pre-measured so that people aren't having to watch me pour milk or water. Nobody wants to see that. So I get all of that done beforehand, and then I'll turn on the live video, and I'll tell them what the purpose is up front so that as soon as they get on there, they know why I'm doing a live video. I will reiterate that purpose two or three times throughout the video because people will get on right in the middle. Don't be afraid to get on looking like trash. That's what people want to see. They want to see that it's you. Sometimes, if my kids are being bad, I will have my husband go upstairs in the playroom with them, but most of the time, it's a free-for-all. And that's okay, because our lives are free-for-alls, and people want to see, hey, it's dance day, I literally have 10 minutes, and then I've got to get back in the car, so I'm gonna make a meal, and my kids are going to run around, and my daughter's going to interrupt me, and I'm going to say, I'm doing a Facebook Live. Do you need me right now? And you're going to see all of that because that's my life. But I'm going to make a meal while all that chaos is happening, and I'm going to say, I'm going to post the recipe in the comments, and then I'm leaving it. I'm not going to tell you how to order at that point. I'm just going to show you, for me, how it works in my life and how easy it is for me. That will resonate with people. That, and it may be, you may have people that you're like, well, that was a bust. I had 17 people watch it and not a single person commented. You will be shocked. Six months later, I'll have a message. I've been watching every single one of your Facebook Live videos, and I think I'm ready to order. I probably had that one. He did it. Um, <laughs> I had no idea he was even interested in it. So you would be shocked. Don't be discouraged if you do a couple and you get nothing. Continue to do it and be consistent with it, and I promise it will pay off. Because people in today's world, in where I live, they do not want to feel pressure. They want to make the decision on their own. They want to watch you and probably judge you, and that's okay, I'll be judged. And then they want to get on their own, and they want to set up their own account, and they want to set up their own delivery. And the beauty of Thrive Life now is that we can let them do that. How much less work is that for me? I don't have to set you up, that's great, do it. Here's my link, get after it. Yes? Do you do the live on your personal page? I do, both. So I will do it on my personal page, just to kill two birds with one stone. I'll do it on my personal page, make it public. So there's three little dots at the top of a post, and I'll edit the, if my kids aren't in it, or if, you know, kind of depends on what the content is. I'll make it a public post, copy the link, and then I'll share it and paste it into my customer group, um, just so I don't have to double do. But if, like, my daughter made, I don't remember what she made, she made I think she made brownies the other day. I just did that in the customer group. I didn't put it on my personal page and then make it public because she was the one doing it. So, kind of depends on the content. Let's save questions for the very end. Okay. So that's done. So, so that, so I think that that's a little bit about, you know, branding yourself. I think that um, I know that someone did a post uh, or a, a, a session about um, Facebook parties. That is a genius way to go. If, if for me. Um, my last 40 customers have come from Facebook Live parties. And the question I get about Facebook Live parties is, do I pre-do my videos, because that's easier, or do you go live in your Facebook parties? 
And for me, I go live because you want to get people engaged in doing that. Um, I kind of, I tried to go and just, because it's easier to do just a video and just reuse the same video. And I found that people were way less engaged with that. Um, so I really think that um, a Facebook live party can, or a Facebook party can be as engaging as a tasting. Those same 40 customers had never tasted the food either. I had one lady come to me at, at a show. I did one vendor event because it was close to my house. And um, she tried pineapple and she was like, hey, I'll do a Facebook party for you. I was like, great. She said, but I just moved from Minnesota, so I don't really know anybody here, so it's going to have to be a Facebook one. Great. I had 25 customers from that one Facebook party, and no one has, has canceled, um, and no one had tasted the food prior. So don't be afraid of Facebook parties, because essentially, if you're showing them how to cook with it on a Facebook party, that resonates. If you have a customer group, and, they, and you encourage them in the party, if after they order, please join Food is Fuel. That's the name of our customer base group. Please join Food is Fuel. And then that gives them yet another outlet to learn tips and tricks and how to cook with it. So it's kind of, that kind of has come along organically, but it has been very successful. So don't just assume that because people haven't tasted our food, they're not gonna order. That's, that, in my experience, that has not been true. So. I think that's it.